Hello there, my fellow navigators, and welcome back to another episode of Dune Lore. Today we shall continue our exploration of this wonderful setting, quite literally this time, by talking about another very important planet. Now, as far as Dune and the importance given to the planets in the lore is concerned, obviously the most lore-rich is Arrakis. But there are a few others which play a major role as well. And it is exactly one of these which I am gonna describe today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Caladan, the homeworld of the Atreides. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? From an astronomical perspective, Caladan is the third planet orbiting the star Delta Pavonis. It is a lush ocean world, and also the ancestral home of House Atreides for more than 26 generations. At least prior to their relocation to the planet Arrakis in 10191 AG. Rain appears to be one of the most common features of the planet's meteorology. The land is broken by many rivers and mountains. It is also host to a diverse and complex underwater ecosystem, and presumably an equally rich and complex biology of the land. Much of the planet's surface is covered by oceans and seas, and the land areas are divided into three continents. The western continent is where most of the people and the industry of the planet is located as well as the planet's capital, the very originally named Kala City. Kala City is also home to the world's main spaceport, and that city also boasts the House Atreides Castle Caladan, which is built alongside a great river overlooking orchards and Mount Sayubi. The eastern continent is much smaller and has little in the way of population centers. The southern continent is the home to many Caledanian winemakers, their product being transported throughout the Empire, as well as the Atreides Landing, another major spaceport. Caladan was the birthplace of the famous Paul Atreides and his father, Duke Leto I. It was also the birthplace of most of Paul's ancestors, which had been heads of the House Atreides and rulers of the planet in the past. In 10191 AG, where AG is after Guild, House Atreides was ordered to relinquish their fief of Caladan, which by that point had been their home for more than 10 millennia. Instead, they were to take control of the fief of Arrakis, which had been previously managed by House Harkonnen, the ancient enemy of the Atreides. After the Atreides moved to Arrakis, Count Hasimir Fenring was named Siridar Absentia of Caladan. However, when House Atreides ascended to the Golden Lion Throne in 10193, following the events on Arrakis, Caladan once again came under the direct rule of the Atreides. Paul installed Prince Zed Orlak from Ikaz as a temporary ruler there. After Paul had been emperor for a year, he and his mother Jessica made a trip back to Caladan to be welcomed as the new ruler of the known universe. As Paul visited Kala City and was to visit the memorial statues of Paulus Atreides, his grandfather, he was told of the Fremen capture of the world of Catain. This would cause Paul to cut his trip short, as he fully realized for the first time that he was the emperor and no longer just a duke. He would install his mother, Jessica, as the Duchess of Caladan, and she stayed and guided the planet for a while. One year later, Jessica returned to Arrakis to visit Paul. A few months after that, Paul uncovered a plot to destroy much of Caladan, which originated with the rebel Earl Memnon Forvald, with his forces being transported by the guild navigator Beric. Forvald was planning to attack the water planet with an immense force of allied houses, destroy Kala City, and kill or take hostage Lady Jessica and Gurney Halleck. Paul, however, discovered this attack while being in a deep trance, and the entire plot failed. I guess it's a bad idea to make plans against a guy who literally sees the future. Jessica did not leave again for another seven years, when she secretly learned about Paul's disappearance into the desert. She and Gurney Halleck returned soon thereafter, 
and she did not leave again for eight years, when she wanted to meet her grandchildren on Arrakis. After the Jihad of Poles spread throughout the Imperium, there were a lot of people wanting to pilgrimage to Caladan as part of a holy quest to retrace the steps of Paul Muad'Dib. However, due to the insistence of Lady Jessica, Caladan was spared from the pilgrim trail. During that time, the Caladan people, under the initial direction of Gurney Halleck, will spend much of their time and energy removing the remnants of Harkonnen rule from the planet Gidi Prime, renaming it as Gamu. The world of Caladan maintained a large agricultural industry. Under the Atreides, the planet's economy flourished through orchards, some of which were part of the Atreides family holdings, as well as exports of pundi rice and fine wines. Because much of the planet was ocean, a great amount of trade on the planet was based on fishing. Indeed, fishing was in fact such a great industry on Caladan that it became ingrained into the culture of its people. Any view of the sea from the coastline would frequently be dotted by fishing trawlers. It would be a man called Louis Catcher IV who would expand the artistic perspectives of the people of Caladan. This guy was the first to found an artist colony, the first Caladan artist conservatory at Epidaurus in the province of Orange, and was soon followed by many others and grew in numbers, respect and quality. After a few years, Caladanians could appreciate and also participate in fine music, poetry, theater, and the overall arts. The local governor supported this work eagerly, because it helped the local population aspire to excellence and also rose the level of tourism from other neighboring planets. Within 250 years, the entire population now had relatively easy access to some kind of reading room, studio, theater, or auditorium. A great number of productions in dance, music, and theater were presented at all times. The people particularly preferred what Dr. Catcher called the ephemeral arts like music, oral reading of poetry, short stories, theater, watercoloring, and paper folding. The Caledanians even grew to have a saying, Art is a flower, enjoy it now, for tomorrow another comes. Education-wise, there was a great reliance on family teaching. A child could learn how to live by simply participating in normal family life. A little time spent on the family vegetable plot, a few hours spent fishing or swimming, or tending the family garden preceded an evening of quiet stories or campfire dancing. One day was much like any other. Of the main concern was preparation for the dangers of their water-rich environment. Children were taught swimming before they even learned how to walk. They learned of the dangers of mudslides, flash floods, and various methods of water transport, the most popular of which was sail rafting. They learned fishing both for pleasure and for food. They also learned how to find their way through the fast-growing vegetation covering most of the landmasses of the planet. The aristocracy, chiefly the six big families that ruled on each of Caladan's three continents, and the 400 provincial regions under these families, were given some more specialized education. Their children were sent to the governance school in the capital city for a four-year program in statecraft, tactics, leadership, management, and civilian control. But even this program was not as rigorous or demanding as it could have been, because after all, the problems that the students would face were not that great, and there was always time to learn in the time-honored method of watching and doing. Now, quite funnily, maybe the most lore we have on Caladan concerns, of all things, their wine. So do pop up the cork and let us sample some. Cassirac is a dry, full-bodied, intensely flavorful, and long-lived red wine, developing nuances and subtle complexities in the bottle for as long as 50 or even 75 years after corking, when it is produced in a favorable climate. However, Caledonian Cassirac is thin and harsh when young. However, the harshness does tend to mellow out before the thinness becomes downright anemia. 
The rule of thumb is that it should not be drunk before it is 5 years old at the very least, but it has to be consumed before it turns 80. Very rarely an exceptional bottling will last even longer than that. According to legend, the original fruit stock was brought on by the Atreides family among its heirlooms when first it came to Caladan. Cassirac remains the favorite Atreides ceremonial wine, maybe more because of tradition than because of continuing quality. The wine does not travel well, and the best Caledonian Cassirac will never leave the Atreides family compound. Bornola is arguably the most promising wine of Caledon. It is a light red wine, always a trifle rough and highly alcoholic, usually around 16%. Its origins though are unclear. It seems to be the result of uncontrolled hybridization over a period of some centuries among hothouse and native grape varieties. Well-made Bornola is fresh tasting and slightly yeasty. Indeed, a remarkable fruity wine. The Caledonian mustiness, which is the bane of vintners the planet over, is almost totally absent from Bornola until the wine enters into the third year. Hence, it should be drunk while it is still quite young. The winemakers continue experimenting with non-traditional vinifying techniques in an attempt to eliminate the mustiness altogether. If they are successful, and if the wine then proves capable of travel and long-term aging, Caledon may finally join the ranks of first-class wine-producing planets. Delkai is a wine that is a bit more ordinary. However, it can still be a pleasant and fruity enough sweet white wine. It is the only commercially available wine on Caledon which is produced entirely out of native grapes. There are a dozen or more different methods of producing this wine, each one a chemical process jealously guarded by this family or that. Depending on the producer, the wine may vary from emerald green to straw-colored, and from syrupy sweet to medium dry. The Atreides winemakers have developed a sparkling delkai from the dry end of the range that, if disgorged annually after the third year in the bottle, ages well and seems to improve with travel. This sparkling delicae is not surprisingly the wine which the Atreides family most frequently serves when ritual or propriety indicates that a Caledonian flavor is desired. In a nutshell, the great house Atreides ruled all aspects of Caledon, and maintained it as a duchy and Seredar fief under the Imperium. The Atreides ruled Caledon with the dominance of the air and the sea, while maintaining a regular standing army that was very loyal. However, shortly before leaving for Arrakis, the Atreides also managed to train a small elite force, which was comparable in ability even to the Imperial Sardukar. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the home planet of the Atreides, the beautiful ocean world of Caladan for today. Definitely a place I would, at the very least, want to visit, if not even live there. But what are your thoughts on the Atreides planet? Do you know any other aspects of it which I missed in the video? Would you like to live there? Do share any thoughts or questions on the topic in the comments below if you want. If you found the video entertaining or informative, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons. Especially for this series as it doesn't get that much views to begin with. Thanks a lot for watching to the end, and I wish you all an awesome and healthy day. May the blessings of Shai Hulud be upon you.